31 points, so if they can get a few early goals, you never really know. Graham and Graham, thanks to the local very good gossip. Vision 1, uh, Bill now leads by five goals, that results up in the air a little bit. Montrose lead by four goals, Fred led by 80 points over his field, Division 2. Doncaster led by 27, Tim Lindback has seven. Montana South lead by 25, Dave on there at Walker Reserve. Bayswater lead by 13, in Division 3, Heathcote by 10, uh, the Basin by 42, and in Division 4, Coldstream by 70. Well, in the North of Warren, got a real chance here inside 50 by Norton. Going to fall on the head, almost a good mark taken there by Tunes. It's going to be out of bounds. Left half forward, flank for Warren, but they're pushing forward. They lead this one to 31 points. Update on that Blackburn Vermont score. Vermont 11 10 76, lead Blackburn 6 5 41. Going in, you cleared out. Harris, hand pass, hands. Get clean hands on that one in the ball. Well, no, no, he won't get a ball up north. Got it out of there, kicks it forward. Forrest still goes through Hills. He couldn't mark. Throws it well there was Lamaris. Hand pass over his head. Coming through beautifully with Dunes. A little handball over the top. Lamaris and on the five. He'll come back. It's a tricky one, that one. But he, he, he handballed it out uh, over the top of his hand, and the umpire's called throw. It, it's what we call old climbers, the old Ted Whitten flip pass. <laughs> Interesting, definitely uh, debatable. Go down now. He certainly didn't throw it, but he didn't punch it either. Yeah. Yeah. Will Taylor on the boundary. Thanks for the last Yeah, I was down at the both uh, huddles at three quarter time, and uh, I must say, both of them uh, were very similar to each other what they were trying to approach in this last quarter. Pretty much going hard. Uh, this is. Uh, Got to use this 25 minutes uh, to the full use, and whoever wins the game, whoever gets the ball, and really fights hard in this last call, will win this ball game. Uh, that's the message from both coaches. Pink cop to Sakluna inside 50. Go the zebra to the top of the square. 2 2 comes out and takes a big mark at 30 metres out directly in front. And he'll get a chance to draw first flight for the zebras. He's got to go back and kick it. He has got to go back and kick it. If Boris or the other one has been on the side, that's the moment for sure. You can see with the strong hands out in front. His hand ball. pass to Magamez. Magamez inside 50. Bang. Pull it through. So Forrest Hill get the start they wanted. Kane Magamez kicks his first. And on the Vendigo Bank scoreboard, they are 5 12 42. They try Warren Dyke. 10 7 67. 25 point ball game, it's getting close, and Will Taylor was right in the thick of things at three quarter time huddles. Brett Shoulders and Michael Tout, how did they see it, Wilbur? He was just giving his report. Uh, thanks for joining us, Stephen. Oh, he gave me the nod as if, like, oh, it's just a nod of I'm ready to go. He said it was just a nod, I did a great job, type of thing. So, well done, Wilbur. Thanks to Life Care, doing a great job today, this afternoon, as the ball's back in the middle of the ground. My bad, totally, don't worry about that. As the kick goes up towards the half ball one, they get the clearance again, the Zebras. With a strong mark being taken by Grant McAdam, who's certainly held his own this afternoon across the right back line. Kick up towards the hand direction. Over the top of his head it goes. At the fall, the ball will be turned to try and keep it in. And over the boundary line it goes. Crosby right on his hammer and will have the boundary throw in. Yeah, soccer player in the <laughs> the Aussie version here. <laughs> <laughs> the Anglo-Saxon version as the handball comes over the top and it's holding a little handball away. Try and get themselves out of trouble here. That was okay by Laws. Inside forward 50 there by Tau. Good kick, but getting down low is McPherson. He's had a good game today, McPherson. He's certainly had a lot of football to contend with as it's gone forward for Warren Oh, that is an absolute shocker kick turned around. This is the big man in Luke Dunn. Opposite to the top of the goal square. McPherson dropped what he probably should have taken. Give the guy a rap and, and Lamaris comes in. Throw two tackle. You've got to ping him for holding the ball for that. Got lucky there. Empire says, um, for a hug and he asked for a back and then throw the ball up about 20 metres out from goal. Very lucky there. Arthur Lamaris. Patrick Alley kicked seven goals to four behinds there. Natalie by 40 points for three quarter time over done that. Across to Will Taylor, thanks to Life. Yeah, what also Matthew, uh, Michael Tapp said at uh, three quarter time is that uh, they felt uh, he felt it was really lazy to play by one guy in that third quarter, which cost them. And again, uh, it looks like it's going to hurt them again this quarter. Well, Dunn was a flyer for Ambers at the back of the pack. He's picked up there by Fleming one way, then the other. Got the handball away. That was okay. Crosby's kick was half smothered. Appleby, he might Senator. be able to snag something here. He goes for the percentage kick, and it was good play too because he got belt upon after he kicked it. Large 
took the mark and it's going to be land with him whether it's downfield or it's a mark it's with daniel large about 35 meters out directly in front very undisciplined play there by the back man of the Forest Hill Football Club. I mean, the, the, the Warrandyke guys centred the ball anyway, and you certainly don't give a free kick after the man centred the ball because they, now they're kicking 35 metres out the left wing. Well, he comes in now, leans over the football and slams it home. Listen to the crowd cheer that one through. That's what the supporters wanted. That's what the home side wanted too, just to stem the flow a little bit. Bendigo Bank scoreboard, 11 goals, 774 leads, 5 goals, 12. 42. It's back out to a very handy margin now. Right? That is a large goal for Warrandyke. Oh, it certainly <laughs> is. Uh, pardon the pun. A sharp word. But no, very close. <laughs> to a 1950s joke, but that's, that is race specialty. <laughs> He's been waiting all day to get that one. Ball back in the middle. Everyone against hand. Ed got that one down. Appleby coming. He's been terrific today. He can't pass over the top. Cullen, middle of the game, pass to Large, the goal kicker. And the climb of Appleby just kept it in front of himself. Well liked it. He went, stepped around one. Appleby kicked to the top of his face. Oh. Another free kick for him. Yeah. Undisciplined again, though, Forest two. There was no need to do that. I reckon his fullback has been like yellow tail. Yeah. His fullback's not going to be too lucky in the first. And he's had a terrific day. His man. Luke Dunn is going to have a shot on goal from 15 metres out to McLean. He's going to push and shove around. Great shepherd there, Scotty! The good thing about Appleby, he's, he's an 18 year old kid. I think he might have been an inclusion to today's team. He hasn't played much senior footy, but he's just been really composed out there. And uh, for a young kid, it's been fantastic. He was one of the players who set them up in that first 15, 20 minutes yeah. of the game. He was. Nice to get rid of it here. And I'm probably having a little bit of a chat moment on the ground. There almost might be a card here. There was certainly a threat of it. I think there might have been two there. For each side. And Luke Dunn comes in 15 meters out directly in front. Should miss. Doesn't miss. That one hurts. Two now for Luke Dunn. And they push their lead out now. 13 goals in the scoreboard. It's 93 to 42. Warren got lead on the Vendigo back score. What, what Forest Hill have to do now, they, they've given away the last two goals on stupid, undisciplined play. Uh, and, but then what they've got to do now is not let Warren guy kick another five or six goals and not score themselves. They've got to just play the ball, play the game out, and uh, let's hope they can be competitive. Yeah, they have to give some fight. They can't let Warren guy roll over the top of them. They can't keep giving away their slip trees because it's putting them out of the game. 79 plays 42. We'll get it right eventually. And the only one making mistakes this afternoon, and it's good to see, is the ball's back in the middle of the ground. It comes out proud. Probably drop it. He should have taken goes after it again. That was Mark Cullen, I should have said. And dives on the football, and we'll have a bounce inside the square, center square around the grounds. Thanks to the local burger company, Aaron Lockyer. Would you believe it? Once again, another full quarter of the scores. Vermont lead by 35 on Blackburn. Ball won by a straight 10 goals over East Ringwood. North Ringwood by 15 points over Hooligan. Montrose by 4 goals over South Korea. Noble Park in a low scoring affair by 38 points over Knox. Uh, no score from Roval and Norwood. Uh, the lead by 18 points over East Burwood. Doncaster East by 27 over Mulgrave. Doncaster by 36 over Scoresby. Uh, Montana South game on over there. North Reserve 25 point leaders over Moorback. The Mustangs are coming. And Bayswater by 13 points. They hit six goals to three in that third term. Is that Scoresby's uh, game again, goals? Scoresby game again, 36 point lead to Doncaster over Scoresby. Okay, so the ball trickles over the boundary line. Justin Zafluna sees that over. Just checking out what available for the Sharks now lead in one stage trail by more than 40 points. And uh, they trail by 36 points at quarter time. Liam Mahaja has kicked his fifth uh, uh, kicked his fifth in the, in the quarter. So they kicked five goals in the third quarter. Currently at three-quarter time. The Sharks lead 13, 10, 88. The Pioneers 12, 9, 81. Probably Dooley as the ball goes inside ball 50 and Nolte at the front spot. Brought the ball to ground. It's cross centre half forward now. Warren Dyke have the numbers picked up there by Harris. Handball a little over the top. Got it away to Large. Got the handball away and now they move through the middle of the ground. Here's Ansoldi. One bounce make that two. He arches it back. Here's a play for Pancake. Oh, play of the day. And 
Ball passes on, he'll let us all down. I got excited as the ball comes back out now for Forest Hill. Mark's been taken there by St. Cotter. He'll move the ball out wide, that's okay. Short passes on, McClellan made some space, takes it on the chest. Short pass, there was a little bit of a chip kick, it went almost into no man's land, but Harris has given away a free kick, so oh, result Scotty. just as good for Forest Hill. 37 points down, they need to get the ball moving. Here's McClellan, handball over the top. Now here's their chance, they can drive the ball inside forward 50 towards the 2-2 direction. He couldn't quite pull the ball down. Warren Dye, as they've done so well all day, they've got numbers at the fall of ball everywhere you turn, picked up there by Lamaris. He got tackled and dispossessed of the football. Free kick will go to Jackie Rowe, who knew it was a free kick. He walked back with authority. He just picked the ball up, didn't even look at the umpire. He knew it was coming his way, and he'll go back to hopefully slot his third goal in the afternoon and keep a glimmer of hope for the Forest Hill football side. He's about 45 metres out. A 45 degree angle. Jakey Rowe comes in now. It's a good kick off the boot. Does it have the legs? It doesn't have the legs, Mark. At the last line of the fence. And now Warren Dyke have a chance to reprieve themselves. The kick was out there towards the large direction. He couldn't find the front spot. There was a good tackle happening on there. There's Hosking. Bangs it on his left boot. In towards the middle of the ground. It could open up here for Warren Dyke. If they can get a little bit of luck. Caught a little handball over the top. That was okay. He's Fleming. Gets it away to McClellan. Uh, to Fleming. Uh, to McClellan, I should say. On the right boot. Now they move it out towards the wing position. Mark's been taken by Sincotter moving it quickly. Here's Pincott in the middle. He's uh, taping, he's falling off. Kicks it in towards the Carnelli direction. Out yeah, there is Nolte as well. Couldn't quite take it. Here's Carnelli. Got a little handball backwards. Kick goes inside forward 50. It's about 20 metres out from goal to one on three situation. 2-2. Two, two. Got it away to Rowe. Can Rowe kick it? Rowe can kick it. That's his third goal of the afternoon to Jakey Rowe. And do Forest Hill have a glimmer of hope yet in this game? 6-12-48 on the Benny Bank scoreboard. They trail by 31 points. Warren Dyke 12-7-79. We've gone seven minutes in this final term. Dyson Baker around the grounds thanks to the local burger company. Division 3, he can lead by 10 points over Chamside. He's not coming home with the Breeze in that last quarter. Temple Stowe have hit the lead. They lead by 6 points over Boronia in a tight affair at Cornwall. South Belgrave Dale. by 6 goals over Ringwood. Dale. The Basin by more than uh, 10 goals over Dale. the Fentry Gully. As we mentioned Hello. before, Park Orchard by 7 points over Whitehorse. Division 4, Coldstream by 70 points. Fentry Gully after kicking 8 goals to 3 behinds lead by 40 points and the Eastern Lions lead by 37. Still no scores from Nano Wadding from over the Hawks. Haven't heard anything all day. Well, Ray, well, Ray you asked for uh, some more effort from Forest Hill when going forward and I think they'd certainly proved it now. Good stuff by their, by 2-2. Two -two. They're brought down to ground and, and, and Row with a lovely finish. Going to need a bit more of that still, I think. Yeah, their forwards are working a bit harder to keep it in there now. Still in the middle, hands up against Stoneham. Down Forest Hill get the clearance there through Witty. Two two little hands off the pick up. He can hand pass to Cicluna on the left foot. It's going over the top of the goal square. Playing in behind was Carnelli. Fist comes to the front. Kick off the ground. It's a goal. It's Wensley. Jack Wensley's kicked his first. And this game is alive and well now. Straight out of the middle. On the Bendigo Bank scoreboard, it is 7 12 54. Forest Hill, they throw Warren Dyke 12 7 79. So some good, points. some good efforts there by yeah. Forest Hill. They're, 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 as I said, their forwards are working a little bit harder now. So when the ball goes down there, they're keeping it in there. And I noticed Luke Dunn, Michael Tauch just taken Luke Dunn off the field. I don't know why. He was standing in the goal square the other end, but he bolted to the boundary line. And they, they big, put the big boy Hamish down at full forward. Well, it's two in a row now for the Zebras. Appleby got a little knocked down, but it was scooped upon there by Witty. Went backwards, then forwards, kicked it up towards centre half forward. It was scooped upon there by Frowder. On the right boot, kicks it into the middle of the ground. They've got the numbers though, the Zebras. Here's Fleming. Kick was half smothered. They've got the numbers out wide though. Scooping upon it now was Crosby backwards. That was okay. Duarte got it to McClellan. Now they're linking up well. On the right boot, up towards the half forward line. Pack forms, couldn't get there. Was Wensley. Nicely chopped off there, so Warren Dyke had the numbers across the back. Short passes on into the middle, that's okay. Ratcliffe takes it. Just outside the centre square, far side of the ground. Ball 
one to play on now. On the left boot up towards the half forward line, bouncing football. Sapluna will be the first one to meet it there for Forest Hill. Did well, kept the ball alive. In the middle of the ground, Crosby on the right boot. It was a scrambly old kick, a little bit of holding might have been happening there for Pinkot. The umpire said it was okay. Picked up by Wilson, he was dispossessed of the football. Hand came in. Here's Cullen though on the right boot, switches the play nicely over the, over the top there to Daniel Lard. He took the mark, then squeezed himself towards the centre position. Inside forward 50, strong mark taken there by Jack Crosby. He has been good though today for Forest Hill. Switches the play now, nicely done. Laws takes the mark, waste no time either. Over the top it goes, up towards centre half forward. Carnally's at the back of the pack. Is it going to fall into his arm? Got a little handball away. Here's for Garmin. Can he make it three in a row, Kane? No, no he can't. It had a little bit of a wrong and to it and through four. One behind, bounced off to the right, a little bit like Ray Baird's deliveries down this centre cricket pitch, and <laughs> three, four, one behind, so the margin narrows, 79 plays 55, we're back to a four-point ball game as we go around the grounds, thanks to the local burger company, they are delicious. A couple of update scores, Chancellor Park, 20, uh, sorry, he's got 21 points up over Chancellor Park, Ooh, last turn, uh, Bayswater only now three points up, Waverley Blues kicking the first three of the last turn, and Moorbuck have kicked the first of the last turn against uh, Montana South. First it did really well then, got it across there since the Fluna bouncing football out towards the Sincotta direction. He has a little, bus, little bit of space to run with. Probably shouldn't have bounced it. He cost himself a bit of time there. Risky handball over to Wilson. They're going to get themselves out of this though. Here's Pincott on the right boot. Spreads it out wide. They've got a chance on goal here. Who's going to have a shot there? It's Crosby. He got pushed in the back as he kicked it. He waited too long, didn't he? Daniel Large comes in. Gave a big, long, looping handball. That was good play. Here's Harris. Backwards to go forwards. They'll switch the play here, Warren Dye, and they'll get themselves out of danger with Tim Hooker taking the mark in the back pocket. Look, he's got a, a great chase there. Oh, the Morris it was. Done the work at both ends. What a good kick. If he can afford a ground level, it's going to be a free kick. It's going to go to Forest Hill, is it? No, he's no, running. He's he's pointed the wrong way. Not way. Oh, Chestnut. Coming on. He's going to take the free kick at half back. Not much on. He's going to have to go long up the line. Does. And over the back, he's Appleby. He has to fly. Oh, he's got a terrific mark, Appleby. Only for the football. Kind of contribution's got me in the middle. Trying to get them across. Appleby long. Hosking coming out of the goal square. It's a good kick, just falls. But then McPherson leads in a race, and you'll see it out of bounds. Right forward pocket. Very interested to know why Luke Dunn was taken off the ground. Well, uh, looks like he might be almost about to come back on. But yeah. To not have him down there as a target. It's quite an interesting move by Michael Town. Thrown in right forward pocket. Yellow throwing. Passes. Right again. You know these, no, coach, you know these coaches these days, PWS, maybe he didn't do the same thing somewhere that we didn't notice, so he's taken off. Yeah, that's why you went on the first two weeks, right? That's Bond. right, mate. <laughs> exactly right. Put the first under pressure and he bonded out. A terrific mark taken by Alston. Great mark. Been really good today, Alston. Classic player. Called the play on now. A little left foot over the top. Yeah. Oh. Forest Hill fine underneath the floor. There was someone coming behind. Carlin drills it inside 50. And a mark taken by our man. How do we say it, Bruce? Scorsus. 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 Got it right by the end of the day. Just ask Brucey if you two don't know it, Peter. Please hit the lead. What's that? Thanks to the local bar company. Please hit the lead over Bay's water by three points. Scorsus comes in. Nice looking kick, and Scorsus has drilled it. He has two now. Um, the Bendigo Bank scoreboard, they move on to 13 7 85. Warren Dyke, they lead Forest Hill 7 13 55. That was just poor stuff by Forest Hill coming out of the back line. Not very good skills. Um, you know, they've been trying to take the game on a lot more, which they sort of have to. So obviously far away from them now but um, unfortunately couldn't quite get it done and yeah, it looks like it's going to roll over. Certainly a goal against the stem of flow there. Forest the Hill they looked like they might be able to snag another one or two and really ignite this game but that just slows things down. Yeah. 
quite so as the ball's back in the middle. Stoneham goes up in the ruck, picked up there by Crosby. Got a little bit, bit little boot to ball. Ruck picked up for Warren Knight. Also got a little boot. Picked up by hand. His fresh air shot went nowhere. Now Forrest still drive the ball forward. Two twos in the back position. It bounces favourably for him. Gets it across to Rowe, who was quick to get boot to ball. It goes into the forward pocket. Oh, oh what a mark by Harris. What a fantastic mark. He had only ice with a football against the flow of play, too. So he kicks it out towards the half back line now. Warren Knight, they've got the numbers going out there, paddling it to their advantage. Here's Tommy Norton, strike one tackle. Sick get out of the way for the second. They've got a good shoe on the ball, too. Appleby takes the mark, true centre wing position. Now they can move the blood inside forward 50. The kick goes deep inside. It was towards the Hosking direction. Couldn't quite pull the ball down. Now the Zebras have got the numbers out there. It was risky there by McClellan out towards the Duarte direction. He laid a tackle on Large and the umpires come in and said it'll be a free kick to Large. For a little bit of crudeness, which is Tiggy Touchwood at best. There's no doubt about that. Large waste no time. It was an absolute spearing pass and nearly knocked two players over. Now, now Forrest Hill will get a, get, get a little bit of a reprieve. Here's Pincock on the boot, just got it out of that danger zone. Rose out there, used his body pretty well, then was able to trap the football. Running himself into a little bit of trouble there. Back looks to go forwards, that's okay. Now the Zebras can go up towards the half ball line. Oh, it's got to pay a free kick for that one. So, Grant playing a play as well. Got Bison and Strick down. Bison Bay down around the grounds. Uh, Van Lake Stenham lead to 41 points over Breakburn. Uh, Park Orchards, White Horse, both can't find the goals. Sharks lead by 10 points. Cougars lead at Coldstream out to 105. 20 minutes gone, final turn. 136 plays, 81. You'd be wishing you said the Cougars would finish on the bottom line of now, wouldn't you, Aaron? As the kick goes by Laws, they go inside forward 50, up towards 2-2. Two, two. He's got two-on-one situation to beat Rose there as well. And here's Ansaldi. The, the gun player for Warren Dyke kicks it out wide. That's a good play. And now they're away. Harris on the right boot goes inside for 50 up towards the Hosking direction. He trapped it well. Got the handball away. Oh, this is great play there by Lamaris, who just dribbles in home. Lamaris has five for the afternoon. What a day out he's having at his home patch at Warren Dyke Reserve. And this game is over. Warren Dyke are taking it home today. Don't you worry about that. Top of the table they'll be tonight after, the, after this game and one game clear too right there. That's all right. And did you notice who the player was out on the other side that kicked that ball to the forward line? It was Luke Dunn. Luke Dunn. Oh, well, he's back on the ground. Oh, thanks very much for that, right? Well, you called it wrong. Did look a little bit stiff too. Yeah, that's who you want to play. Talk about ruining a good, good, good call of play, I'll tell you what. Fall back in the middle. <laughs> Shit, that one on the have, Yeah, you can have a two-week break. Don't worry about that, right? Chance out of the middle. Big cut. Arms inside. He might go from inside the centre square, but it's off to the right. Ball's going to bounce away. Still a chance. Wensley under it. Got the good bounce. Was wrapped up. Got a hand pass out. Here's a chance for Alston. Round the body. Just couldn't get enough height on it. And it wrapped up in the tackle. Oh, he struck out of it beautifully there. Hills. Back into the middle. 2-2. Two -two. Back to Hills. I'm sorry, no, it's Woody, but now it's on the line. Someone hands in their mouth and wind back and clear. And that's taken here by Norton. You can relieve, you can go, got men on to his left. And he uses them right now. Who's, who's that, Ray? Well, right. you're calling the game. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it right, Good that's job. all. Big switches on. He's hooky. A chance. There's a long line. Mark taken by Luke. Dropped it tap. Third chance worked to his advantage in here. Runs inside. Kicks towards Hosky. That's a good matchup. Carnelli at full back. Carnelli did well and just ran away from half back. Kicks inside the centre square. Mark taken in the middle. Now a chance to move forward now. Forest Hill. Good hand pass there by Wilson. Towards half forward. Again, there's the spoiler on this occasion. Couldn't win the ball at ground level. And we will have a ball up now. Half forward. For Forest Hill, they trail. Keep your scores coming in around the grounds at footy EFL. Dice of Baker working feverishly around the grounds. Thanks to the local burger company, I know that Dogger Limbach has eight out at Mulgrove. Uh, now, now a seven point lead on Waverley Blues. Uh, those are, those <laughs> no are surprise only, you mentioned that game. Well, though. those are the only couple of ones that have been <laughs> outstanding on a regular basis. Out of the have extended their lead over up the Central Gully, now beyond 10 goals. Keep those scores coming in, that's what we're after. This game is done and dusted. Penalty. 
Situation. Froud almost marked the first one. Clear up. Been good back there. Maybe not. A little bit iffy. Paddling in front. Gorchy bringing pressure on. He's got wheels. Gorchy. They all fell over. Ash Froud. Clean pick up. Right hand pass to Dunn. This will seal the deal. And Luke Dunn has kicked the goal. Number three for him. Back on the ground. Warren got a home. 18, 7, sorry, 14, 15, 7, 97. We'll get there in the end. Warren got lead. Forest Hill, 7-13-55. Yeah, too much pace by Warren Dyke. They've, they've really outrun um, Forest Hill in this last quarter, putting on five here, goals to three. Uh, just been too good, been too half. quick. Yeah. Uh, they deserve the points. They played very well today. Spoke about 2-2 to the BWS. He hasn't looked like a real target, but he's probably given them a better target than they had in the third half for the most part of the second half. So at least let it off a little bit here, isn't it? What he's done, Aaron, also, is he's brought the smaller players in the forward line around him into the game by hand passing off and then just doing shepherding and bulletin work. Shepherding is down there as a target and needed to pull some big ones in this afternoon. There's absolutely no doubt about that. As Alan Salvi on the left boot, usually very clean with his skills, kicks it up towards a done direction. Now at the back of the back, Froud going after it. Might have been a little bit of holding. The umpire saw it late. Sam Coghlan's missed a shot for Park Orchard, which would have sealed the deal. Currently an 18 point lead in the favour of Park Orchard over the White House Pioneers. Great game out there. Welcome to Division 3 football, Forest Hill. Uh, so, Forest Hill Park oh. Orchards, they have been super so far. Only the one loss so far, you think. Oh, Update from Wally Chibbers there is Fletcher Gully 14 14 98 lead Don Vale 8 8 56. So uh, after tra trailing most of the afternoon, they're going to win by 50 plus points. Wally Chibbers there, Fletcher Gully was there. I've only ever known it as Fletcher Gully. So. It's Chibber. only changed in the last two months. A great, a great not to cancel that. Final, final score coming through from Wayne Brasher out at Arctic Park and at Coldstream with <laughs> one. By a considerable margin in the end, we did get the final score to low. David Van is off of the yellow car as well. But he's been got now for the Zebras. Umpire's going to call it back. The target was 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> threw it into, threw it into a one guy player. 22-11-143. Cold stream defeated Surrey Park 5. 8 38. That's absolutely massive. Good to see Brash go out there today. He's been dying to see what Coldstream's all about this year after people like Aaron and the Huddle Boys wrote them off at the start of the season. We're not going to forget about that because they're doing pretty well, the old Cougars. Ball goes deep inside 52 against the deck. I'm not sure about that. You might have to get a bottom that time for a little bit. Eight goals for a good time. It's a super finish. I'm sure you even reiterated it on the second show. Apologising to him, mate. So we'll, uh, we'll just leave that as it is at the moment. Lee, Lee, Lee Green has just tweeted to forget Matt Weather and Pacquiao, it's Ray Baird and BWS. <laughs> <laughs> probably more likely to pay 60 bucks for that. At least we know it'll be over in the first few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> probably not my way in. <laughs> Ray knows how to take the low blows as the ball goes inside and the mark's been taken by Justin Sclooner is yet to trouble the scoreline today but he'll have one of the last shots on goal for this match currently 55 plays 97 so 7 goals is the lead can it be reduced to a 6 goal margin it can't even be brought back by a point as the ball goes out of bounds as the siren sounds out here at Warren Dyke Reserve and it is a convincing victory 15 goals 7 for the Bloods 97 Forest Hill 7, 13, 55 in what was a, a game that was a top of the table clash but I tell you what from that quarter time Warren Dyke held away as he took a great kick on the boundary line for the last kick of the day. He became the Garners and he's put it through for one behind. I'm not 
Touche, that must have been off the play. The Forest Tour will go in at 7 goals, 14, 56. The final margin is 41 points. Take that back. 15, 7, 97 for the Wollongong Football Club. So, fantastic effort here by the Bloods. It was on their home patch in picturesque conditions out here at Warrandyke Reserve. The ground's in great nick. The crowd was out in force. 1v2. And after Forest Hill got off to a very solid start, which couldn't quite put the goals on the board, it was Warrandyke who had the answers from there on in. And they just really wanted the football more to do. Yeah, we could.